Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, that's Bart. I'm going to continue reading our book, Poison Power, by Drs. John Goffman and Dr. Arthur Tamplin. Uh, we're on Chapter 6, How Safe Are Nuclear Reactors? And we are reading from an exchange in recent hearings from the JCAE, Joint Commission of Atomic Energy, that took place between the AEC Commissioners James Ramey and Thompson and Congressman Chet Holyfield and Hosmer. So we're through about two pages of it. Okay. Uh, one of the things I want to let you know, though, is that the word effluent, that we're saying all the time, I looked it up because I wasn't really sure what it meant. Effluent means the discharge of the wastewater that's being um, discharged from the nuclear power plant. In this case, it means the nuclear power plant. It's the discharge waste from a processing plant or some other man-made building or from a river. Even you can have effluents from a river. But in this case, they're talking about the effluents from a nuclear power plant. And so we're at the top of 154 where I about split a gut. And uh, I will read that again because I know it was pretty disruptive. This is Dr. Thompson, okay? Uh, Dr. Thompson, if the radioactive effluent standards are too rigid, in my mind at least, there are some very grave worries that I have concerning whether this may not reduce the ultimate safety of the reactor plant itself. If one begins to push too hard on the holding down effluents, one may, as a result, affect reactor safety adversely. For instance, we may hold up all the tritium in the plant. This tritium makes, it very, makes very high levels of tritium in the air inside the containment then the tendency will not to be to inspect the plant so often. Another example. In the boiling reactor, there are those who would cut down the effluent so that it is released through the stack too strenuously and too early before technical feasibility for doing this has been demonstrated. It may well be that as one moves from a very long holdup of gases in the boiling water reactor effluent system, and a lot of the gases which come out of this plant are really hydrogen and oxygen, which are disassociated from the core reactor. There is a possibility that unless one is very careful, you would induce an explosive hazard where no hazard existed before. That's because they're fucking putting the pollution in the river. Oh my God, I hate these people. Therefore, there is a very close interaction between effluent discharge levels and the safety of the reactor. I am somewhat concerned that we will move from a more safe reactor to a less safe reactor if we push the effluents down more than we should on a reasonable basis. I believe we are on a reasonable basis right now. These people are fucking sociopaths. Can you imagine what they're fucking saying? In other words... This is uh, in parentheses. In other words, the more you restrict the levels of radioactivity, radioactivity loosed on the world outside the plant, the more you risk a possibly ca catastrophic explosion at the nuclear reactor. Unquote. Exactly. Meaning, we have to push the waste into the world for the reactor not to explode. But let's just keep funding it and give them all of our fucking money and denying that radiation causes harm. Right, Jay Cullen. I wish Jay Cullen would read this m book. Swear to God, those cowards. Representative Hosmer, you brought up this matter of the cushion. You used as an example if you go from 1 to 3%. Dr. Thompson, I pick the number 1 to 3. Representative Hosmer, let us call that a size cu 3 cushion. Let us call that a size 3 cushion. If you could go to 100% under the same limitations, would you then be using a size 100 cushion? Dr. Thompson, that is right. Representative Holzmer. So let us get into the reasonableness of the size of the cushion. We know that the limitations are established on the basis that you can go up to 100 and still, no do, still do no damage to individuals and the public. But some people seem to think that there is not enough known, so that might not be an absolute guarantee. So why do we think in terms of reducing the legal size of the cushion to what would be reasonable? If you say you want to go up to 3%, maybe the size cushion, 
Oh, excuse me, I'm kind of confused by this analogy. If you say you want to go up to 3%, maybe size 3 cushion or maybe size 10 cushion to give you some extra latitude, some elasticity, you know, to assure the public again and again and again for their safe, for their health and safety is being cared for. Quote, this is uh, Goffman and Tamplin's <clears throat> message. We think Representative Hosmer's statements here could indicate perhaps better than anything else could the total confusion that exists in regard to the possible hazards we face. An important question is to is why do the Joint Committee and the AEC assure us that we are in no danger, even though they themselves confess to a great deal of confusion and uncertainty? Unquote. Back to the narrative. Mr. Ramey. Mr. Chairman, may I comment on that? Chairman Holyfield, yes, proceed. Mr. Ramey. I think we do have the standard for guidance here, and it is the standard that is under the FRC of holding the levels as low as practicable. Wow. We have looked at this rather carefully, but we are still looking at it as Dr. Thompson has indicated. But there are these factors that we have to take into account in balancing this, these trade-offs between reactor safety and the safety from effluence. It might be possible to give some guidance as to what is practicable, how this could be handled, but it is not likely to be something that sets some limit in terms of radioactivity. It is more likely to be a guidance in terms of design and in terms of operating procedure on how the utilities are holding these levels down in these ranges. Because every once in a while, you may have to go up to any particular limit and be near your 100% factor. Representative Hosmer. Dr. Ramey, with the older reactors that Dr. Thompson has just discussed, the Humboldt Bay reactor, for instance, the technology has now proceeded to where the practical limits observed in the normal course of operation are by a factor of 100 below the legal limits prescribed in the licensing process. Since the technology has developed, and since the practical limits are being observed, am I trying to seek in some accommodation between the present legal limit and the practical limit at which the elasticity, the cushion, would be adequate, but at the same time the legal limits reduced? Mr. Ramey, as I say, Mr. Hosmer, I think if we look on Part 20, that number is initially set, as has been brought out, as a very conservative number in the first place with a great number of factors of conservatism in it. Representative Hosmer, Part 20 has already been described by Dr. Thompson as a, quote, dynamic and living thing, unquote. That's right. So this is Mr. Ramey. That is right. I think the way we are looking at it in terms of, of is with, I think the way we are looking at it is in terms of within it and in accordance with the FRC guidelines of how one might be, might provide guidance on what is practical below the Part 20 numbers. Now, operating experience has shown that these are part of the fraction of the Part 20 numbers of these types of reactors. There are transient situations which may exceed this experience. For example, in Minnesota, in this Minnesota permit, what they have taken as an average and made that the limit. I'm going to read that again. For example, in Minnesota, in this Minnesota permit, what they have taken as an average and made that the limit. Anybody knows that when you set a limit based on an average, that sometimes you are to go over the average and at other times you are going to go under it. So if you set it at the average and as an absolute limit, you're going to be violating it. Representative Hosmer, I am not talking about an average. I am talking about an average plus a reasonable cushion and asking if a size 99 to 100 is a reasonable cushion 
Or would the size 25, for example, be a reasonable cushion? Dr. Hosmer, I mean Dr. Thompson. Mr. Hosmer, we don't have at the moment any way to set up a reasonable cushion. There is not that sort of experience. So we should not move and make that cushion smaller until the experience exists. So this was in the environmental effects of producing electrical power. Hearings before the Joint Committee on Atomic Energy, 91st Congress, first session, held October 28th through the 31st, November 4th through the 7th, 1969, Washington, D.C., U.S. Government Printing Office, 1969, Part 1, pages 203 to 205. Wow. Basically, what the AEC commissioners were saying is that they don't want to change the standards until they know how much radioactivity will be released. If the reactors are going to only release one hundredth of the allowable present allowable release rates, then why should the AEC be so reluctant to lower the standards by at least a factor of ten? The only conclusion is that a reasonable person that a reasonable person can come to is that the AEC does not firmly believe that these reactors will be able to operate at these lower release rates. This one percent release rate is a design objective. I should read that again. This 1% release rate is a design objective. Dr. Thompson recognized this in his testimony and also recognizes that an operating plant may exceed these objectives by a wide margin. A little later on in his testimony, Dr. Thompson stated, Frankly, at this stage in the development of atomic energy, I think it would be premature to set this, say, 3% cushion or 10% cushion in an arbitrary manner. I think we ought to look at the large plants that are coming online and see how they are doing. I think it will be at the same levels as present plants, but we also need a fair amount of cushion. Mr. Wilfred Johnson, another AEC commissioner, supported Dr. Thompson's position a little later on in the testimony. Mr. Thompson, I want to add with regard to the same point that Mr. Thompson brought up that we do need the flexibility in the levels, in part because they have to apply broadly over various kinds of plants, such as chemical processing plants, as well as reactors. They are also related to occupational exposures. There is no way to completely divorce the matter of effluence of a plant from the occupational exposure that the employees gets. They are related matters. On top of that, we must consider new plants that come along. They will have different kinds of releases and limits have to apply to them too. If we were too rigid, we would have nothing but boiling water and pressurized water reactors from now on. If we get to liquid metal cooled fast breeders, the effluent problem will be different. Hopefully they will be better, but we know they will be different. We need flexibility for these reasons. In other words, let's just experiment on every single plant life, every single form of life on this planet. These guys were are really insane. I mean, seriously, talk about sociopaths. Okay, so we're back to Tomplin and, and Goffman. Here, Commissioner Johnson admits that nobody knows what the effluent problem will be in the fast breeder reactors, which the AEC assures us are the only final solution to our power problems. They have announced plans for such a reactor in Masshopin, Pennsylvania. Presumably, they must wait until this reactor is in operation before they know how much radiation will be released in its operation. To a considerable extent, the amount of radioactivity released to the environment by an operating nuclear power reactor depends upon the integrity of the fuel rods in the reactor. The large reactors that are planned and are being constructed in this country today have thousands of fuel rods inserted into the core of the reactor. These fuel rods can develop small pinholes. 
The radioactivity generated within the fuel rods then leak through these pinholes and into the water, which is moderating the reactor. And then he says, see the diagram of the reactor on page 38. <clears throat> In a boiling water reactor, the gaseous product will be released through the stack. The reactor is not able completely to contain this water, which bays and moderates the fuel elements and collects the radioactivity which leaks from the rods. Therefore, radioactively contaminated water accumulates within the house reactor housing. This radioactive wastewater is then released into the cooling water and returned to the river or to the ocean. Who the fuck thought these things were a good idea? Consequently, the degree below the maximum permissible concentrations that a given reactor will be able to operate depends on the integrity of its fuel rods, as well as the integrity of all the valves, nozzles, and pipes of the plumbing and cycling system of the reactor. The reactors presently under construction are planned to operate for some 20 years. Plans are to change the fuel rods only once every two or three years. These reactors are considerably larger than the reactors upon which we have any experience to date. Wow. I'm going to stop here. Uh, this hurts to read this, knowing how deeply we have been betrayed. We have sorely been betrayed. And so have every single one of our elected officials have been betrayed because they really believe this idea that nuclear reactors are safe. Maybe we need to buy these books and send them to our elected officials. This morning I read the NRC uh, nuclear alerts and what were they talking about? leak there was a crack in one place there was a leak here every monday i need to i read the nuclear alerts on my radio show the age of fission and uh reading this it is really bringing it home how we have been in danger for the last 70 years we are like fucking frogs in a pot of boiling water put your courage feet on you guys Please make any contributions that you can to Dana Durnford's uh, Legal Defense Fund. He definitely needs it. Go to nuclearproctologist.org and make a contribution. If you have spare funds and you can help us out at Radcast, we really need your help so that we can buy a um, gamma spectrometer that will test for food. It's a people's lab. We'll be testing anybody's food who sends it to the people's lab up in the northwest here. So thank you for all your support and uh, put your courage feet on. I'll read again tomorrow. I promise I won't be gone for too long again. Thanks for listening. Ciao.